morning. I beg you, stop what you're doing right now and pray for believers in Af Afghanistan. We'll do that momentarily on Grounded. This is a weekly podcast and video cast brought to you by Revive Our Hearts. I'm Portia Collins. I'm Dana Gresh. And if we sound a little solemn this morning, it's because A, Erin Davis is not with us and we miss her. It's the first episode of Grounded she's missed since we started last year. And you'll remember that we started to respond to the headlines. We wanted to bring hope and perspective to what we were reading in the headlines. And I know this, that Erin Davis, from her vacation spot today, is praying. Because the headlines today are crying out for women who love Jesus to get on their knees and pray. And listen, I know that you got stuff of your own happening in your life. Yesterday, I had the migraine of all migraines. I was texting my girl, Portia, and saying, you've got to pray for me that I can do grounded tomorrow. My husband was driving me home. We were visiting the in-laws over the weekend. And sometimes food helps me when I have a migraine. And so I was like, I got to have food. Well, we stopped. We picked up a hamburger. We got on the road, took one bite of that hamburger, and they had the lettuce, the tomato, the cheese, the onion, but they forgot the hamburger. Okay? Okay? First world problem, my friend. And you know what? At that moment, the Lord arrested my heart because I wanted to be angry. I'm in pain, Lord. Why can't I at least have a hamburger? And then I remembered what I'd been reading about my brothers and sisters in Haiti that's been rocked by another horrific storm and has yet mm -hmm. another tropical storm heading its way any day now. There are believers in that right now. And then Afghanistan. Pray for Afghanistan. Lord, th these are the big issues that need to be on our hearts today. And, and you might you might be having issues. You know, maybe there's no beef in your hamburger bun, or maybe your kids didn't get ready for school on time this, this morning, or maybe your husband's out of work. Those issues matter. But this morning, I want to turn your heart towards our believers, especially in Afghanistan. Yesterday, the Taliban, an extremist Islamic group prone to violence and hatred towards Christianity, also very extremely abusive towards women. They forcefully, took, they forcefully took over the government of Afghanistan, and we want to ask you to join us to pray for them. Open Door USA has listed the nation of Afghanistan as the second most horrifying country in terms of Christian persecution. And Taliban expression about 20 years ago for believers was so horrific. Um, it's not expected as they take over yesterday that it's going to be worse, but there will be more of it because in the last 20 years, God has been moving and there are more believers in that country today. Mm. Well, let me read what Portia, a... why don't you read what Wikipedia has to say about the number of believers in Afghanistan? Yeah, I'm going to read that. Um, some confirmed reports state that there are 1,000 to 18,000 Afghan Christians practicing their faith secretly in the country. A 2015 study estimates some 3,000 uh, 3,300 Christians from a Muslim background residing in the country. Yeah. So we're talking thousands, not hundreds of thousands, maybe 10,000. And to be blunt, they're facing firing squads and decapitation today. That's what our brothers and sisters may be facing. And when one thing happens to believers, it happens to all of us. We are one body. So I ask you, please pray for them with us right now. Portia, would you just take a moment Absolutely. and lift them up to the Lord? Absolutely. Absolutely. Father, Lord, we pray that you will be with our brothers and sisters in Afghanistan. Lord, we pray that you will be with all of us, but especially so them, Lord. Um, we know that this is a terrifying time and they are coming up against um, an immense amount of persecution. And Lord, I am just reminded of your word in Joshua, um, the first chapter, the ninth verse, where you you remind us that to be strong and courageous, to not be frightened or dismayed because you, our God, we are, you are with us wherever we go. So it doesn't mean it, we can have everything against us 
everything. But if you are with us, Lord, we know that we have everything that we need. And so, Lord, I pray that you will be with these brothers and sisters, comfort them, protect them, keep them in peace. It's in Christ's name that I pray. Amen. We hope you'll pray throughout the day for them, and we hope maybe you'll push the share button on your Facebook page or share this um, through YouTube, because we need people praying for believers in Afghanistan right now. Trisha Lott Williford is with us today. She's an author, and um, she says the Bible was useful, is useful in our actual lives, no matter what we're facing, whether it's persecution in the Middle East or first week back to school in the United States. God's word is a lamp to light our path. And she learned that when? During one of the most horrific times of her life. But first, Portia, I know the headlines are bad in terms of Afghanistan and Haiti, but have you heard any good news this weekend? Well, yes, I have, Dana. I have had some heard some good news. Um, as you continue about your day, um, like I said, we want to, want you to keep praying for our brothers and sisters in Afghanistan. I I can't share names, but one thirty something man living in exile reports just how secretive believers must be. Um, he remembers and he, and he says, my parents always put an extra plate at the table for guests. He said, I said to them, we are poor. How can we have others? He says, my father replied, Jesus shared everything with others. He says, then I asked, who is Jesus? And he said, we are Christians, not a word more. Mm, not a word more. Even with their children, Afghan believers must be wise with their words. Well, their son did come to faith in Christ. And at some point, they got him out of the country as a child to live his faith in freedom. He, and he now resides in Italy. And through WhatsApp, if you've heard, heard of WhatsApp, it's like a little chat program that many of us have on our phone. Uh, WhatsApp provides Christian content to believers in Afghanistan. And these are real people with faces and names. And we just can't share them without risking their lives. But we must pray for them. Pray earnestly for them. And here comes the good news on a dark day. It comes from yet another Afghan believer living outside the nation. And I want to read this just as it's written. So listen closely, okay? We've heard reports of an openness among Muslims who are watching what the Taliban is doing. Remember, the Taliban says we are the best Muslims. We are following Muhammad the way he should be followed. And so when they come in, there is violence and abuse of women. People look at that and say, wait a minute. If that's what the best Muslims do, what other teachings are out there? I will say it again. Pray for the believers in Afghanistan. And I will say it with you, Portia, let's keep praying. That's that's news that you won't hear on other outlets, isn't it? That God mm -hmm. is using this hardship to open the hearts of people who may have been resistant to the name of Jesus Christ. And yet now they're looking at what's happening in their country and saying, maybe, just maybe, there's something different. Well, sisters, mm -hmm. if we're going to be effective prayer warriors, we've got to get grounded in God's word. So open your Bibles to 1 Corinthians 12, 12 to 13. Portia, read us some truth for our day. All right. It says, for just as the body is one and has many members and all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slave or free, and all were made to drink of one spirit. Mm, okay, you know that one. That's a familiar verse to many of us. We're one body. The whole universal church of Jesus is one we are the body and Christ is the head of that body. And I think this applies today in a really special, in a very special way. Um, 
if we are the body, what's happening to our brothers and sisters in Haiti is happening to us. What's happening to our brothers and sisters in Afghanistan is happening to us. What's happening with your sister across the the um, the, the the city that you live in? That's happening to you. Um, but let me go back a few years to another time when believers, God's chosen people, were being persecuted in another country in the face of Nazi persecution of Jews. Uh, you're probably familiar with Dietrich Bonhoeffer. He once wrote this, no one can become a new man except by entering the church and becoming a part of the body of Christ. It is impossible to become it is impossible to become a new man as a solitary individual. The new man means more than the individual believer after he has been justified and sanctified. It means the church. It means the body of Christ. In fact, it means Christ himself. Christ himself, the head of the body along with the hands of Jesus, the feet of Jesus, the heart of Jesus. That's who's suffering in Haiti. That's who's suffering in Afghanistan today. That's who's suffering in um, another home around the corner from you. If they're believers, that's happening to us. What happens to one of us happens to all of us, happens to Jesus. So please, I beg you, pray. Pray not for your own needs today, but pray for the needs of other believers. Now, listen, when we started this uh, episode, started planning it a few weeks ago, uh, we knew that we wanted to talk to Trisha, to, to Trisha Lott Williford. We knew that she was going to be our guest. We didn't know what the headlines would be, but here's the good thing. God knew. And as we get grounded with God's people today, we're going to be visited by a wonderful author who fell in love with the Bible during a very painful time in her life, which is what we hope will be, be is going to be happening for women all across the globe today, no matter what country they're in, no matter what circumstances they're in. Her new book is titled, This Book is for You, Loving God's Word in Your Actual Life life. Welcome, Trisha. We are so delighted to have you here with us today. So much. Good morning. Good morning. What a great conversation. I'm so glad to be part of it today. Well, Trisha, um, I am just getting to know you and already falling in love with you. I spent a lot of time this week learning about you and your heart, and I learned this, that you fell in love with God's Word during a time when some pretty bad things were happening in your life. Can you tell us about that? Yes, I can. Um, things got really sad really fast in my life. And that was, we were smooth sailing along with, you know, two kids in the house and the minivan and the dog and everything seemed to be okay. And um, I really thought that that was created because I was, I had been so obedient. I had followed the rules mm -hmm. of God. I had found his favor because I had chased after everything he had asked, ever asked me to do. And I deceived myself into thinking that I could create this sense of security around me. And all of a sudden, my husband got very sick, very fast. He was sick for just 12 hours. The doctors thought he had the flu. They sent him home from the hospital and they said, he won't die from this, but he is going to feel like it. And um, he, it was two days before Christmas and he died in my arms the next morning. Um, and what they thought was the flu was actually an infection in his bloodstream that attacked his heart, attacked his lungs. Mm. And he was very suddenly gone. Um, our little boys were five years old and three years old. And as I said, it was two days before Christmas and I was 31 years old and suddenly a single, single mom, a widowed mm. single mom. Oh, <clears throat> Trisha, what a, what a grief stricken day that must have been. I can't, I, I don't know too many women who could tell me that their husband died in their arms at home, especially after they'd just been told they were, that he's going to be fine. I I can't imagine what what that would be like. I, I would love to have coffee with you and hear all the details, um, because I know that there's a woman right now who's listening that's in circumstances that just feel a whole lot like that day did for you. How is it that God used that to cause you to fall in love with His Word? 
Well, I felt, Dana, like now what am, I mean, everything on my life tilted at a 45 degree angle. Everything was just not right. And there were some invisible things that were still true. I, I knew it in my spirit, but everything that I looked at felt like, what am I supposed to do now? What am I supposed to do now? And I and I I had grown up in the church. I had read the Bible, but I didn't really feel like I wanted to dive into it right then, Dana. I just felt like I, I couldn't, I didn't know where to begin. I didn't know what to do with it. And everything in the Old Testament felt like, kind of like an angry God who punishes people who disobey the law. And that made me feel like, did my husband die because I disobeyed? Did I get something wrong? Mm -hmm. Did I make God angry? And I didn't really feel like I could read the New Testament because that was filled with this gracious, loving Jesus who seemed to be walking about town, handing out miracles to people whose faith was strong enough. And I felt mm. like, was my faith not strong enough to save the life of my husband? I, I'm mm. living in this tension between these two. And so I opened somewhere in the middle of the book, sort of in the middle, to the book of Psalms. And I started, I went to uh, my favorite coffee shop. I took my journal, I took my Bible, and I took some pens. And I just started copying the book of Psalms. And I, I didn't know how to talk to this God who had let the bottom fall out of my world. When, when God has given you everything you have and then he takes it away, that sovereignty card feels like one hard piece to hold in your hands. Yeah. So I started copying the book of Psalms so that I could borrow the the words of, of the psalmist and learn how to talk to God again. And here's what I found, Dana. I found that every single emotion is covered in the book of Psalms. Every single emotion <laughs> yeah. is addressed. And some of them are worshipful and some of them are joyful and some of them are declaring the powerful name of Jesus. And some of them are saying, this is the worst I've ever known. Mm -hmm. I would rather die than live through this. Mm -hmm. And they, for example, Psalm 88 from beginning to end doesn't have a redeeming sentence like, but I will praise the Lord, but the sun will rise again. Like it just yeah. allows us to live in our lament and to ask yeah. God, how long must this continue? How long must this wow. go on? And what I learned from that is that if he made me, he's bigger than me. And mm -hmm. if he knows me, then he knows my emotions. And sometimes wow. that's the very first step of intimacy with him is opening these words in my actual life and bringing my actual emotions that I don't have to polish them and get them clean before I can come before this sovereign God who he's, he's big enough to hold all the pieces. Uh, he is big enough to handle it all. You can bring to him what is in you, not what should be. I think a lot of times when we're on those devastating days, those devastating periods of time in our lives, we think, oh, I, I need to really pray the, the proper words and not the words I'm really feeling, but God can handle what you're really feeling. And I love, you know what, as you mentioned the Psalms, what a wonderful thing. These are part of the ordained words of God. So they're God's words, but they're also the words of believers who have walked through times in their lives when they were rocked, their faith was rocked, just like ours is being rocked. So they're their words. They're their prayers. It's the one part of the Bible where it's not only the words of God, but the words of other believers and you took that power and you made them your words when you didn't have words to take to God. What yeah. a powerful example. What would you say to someone who feels a little bit like you did when you were in that time of devastation? You're looking at the Old Testament and going, can't handle it. You're looking at the New Testament going, can't handle it. And God's word just feels really difficult to connect to when you're in ground zero. What would you say to that woman today? Oh, what I would say to her is one of the things that is absolutely true, just as you said, Dana, that this, these words that were true for this believer um, in the past who wrote this song or wrote this poem in the hardest night, in the darkest night of their soul, um, the Holy Spirit was there in that moment. And the Holy Spirit who resides within you is with you in your moment and just as you talked this morning about the believers in Afghanistan and in Haiti, the Holy Spirit is with them in their moment. Yes. 
And the truth is that he is the God that is bigger than anything that we can understand or imagine. And some, here's one of my favorite things about Jesus is that when he left the earth, he said, I'm, I'm leaving with you the Holy Spirit who will be your advocate and who will be your intercessor. And if we believe, and I do, that God made us and Jesus walked among us and the Holy Spirit lives within us, then the Holy Spirit is kind of secretly my favorite of the Trinity because I understand <laughs> his voice. I hear it. I hear it within me and I know it. Mm -hmm. I know that voice. And so I can say to that Holy Spirit, I don't know how to pray right now. Yes. I don't know how to pray for my sisters who live across the city. I don't know how to pray for my sisters who live across the world. I don't know how I'm going to get through this thing today. And we can call on the Holy Spirit to pray for us and to pray for them and to intercede on our behalf. We are invited to do that. And sometimes that puts a handle on a door that feels locked and gives us the opportunity to say, oh, this is my way in. This is my way in. Wow, oh, Trisha. I could just have coffee with you every morning. Listen, um, as we think about believers in Afghanistan and Haiti who are facing hardships, we, 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 let's bring it here to the United States. And we're facing lots of opinions. Um, we're facing the the Delta variant. We're facing news that we don't really want to read. What's a Bible verse right now that you're clinging to as an American sister in Christ that's really encouraging you as we walk through these very dividing times? Oh, oh my goodness. What a beautiful question. There's so many that flood my mind. Um, I am thinking right now of, of the words unfailing love unfailing mm. love. And I love how that is a theme of all of the Psalms. It's just woven throughout. And when I watch for it, it shows up over and over and over and over again. And to consider, to to sing of his unfailing love, to talk about his unfailing love, to claim it when I don't feel it, to remember that God is still in this with us, mm. um, is such a reminder of the fact that I don't even, I don't have to be afraid. I don't have to worry. The hard right. things have been answered and have been taken care of. But also I think that I've, I've been thinking about the verse in Psalms that says, for I know that God is on my side. Now mm. we can usually take that to mean that means he's on my side, not on your side, my side, right? <laughs> my side. He's on my side and we serve and love and praise a God who is faithful and unchanging and who loves me and he loves you, even if we don't agree yeah. on this. That's right. And right now the world is filled with people who are unsure. And sometimes as Brene Brown says, we get scary when we're scared. And that's yeah, kind of what's happening is a lot of people are feeling scared. And what we can remember is I know that God is on my side. He is beside me, but he's also mm -hmm. beside you. Not because we have to be warring against each other, but because we can be walking in unfailing love and loving one another, knowing that he's with me and he's with you. Amen. Oh, Trisha, you filled my heart up this morning. It's better than a cup of caffeine to hear a sister <laughs> talk about her love for the word of Christ. Thank you for being with us. Thank you so much. God bless you guys. Trisha Lott Williford is the co-host of the Let's Talk Soon podcast, along with her brother, Rob. You can check out her newest book. This book is for you, Loving God's Word in Your Actual Life. If you enjoyed her as much as I do, I know you're going to check out those two things. Yeah, yeah. Well, if today's program charged you up and motivated you to get in the Word, to get in the Word... Um, it's because it feels so good to be united as one body. Um, you know, if if you long to be with other women who pray beyond their own needs and truly love God's word, and y'all know that is my thing, okay? I, like, I love God's word and I want to be with other believers who love God's word. Well, I know just the thing that you can do to... Mm foster that. All right. Join Tell us me, about it. Dana, Aaron, Nancy DeVos, Wogamuth, and a few thousand other women at Revive 21. We are getting together 
in just a few weeks. Like it is really rolling around. I've been looking at the mm-hmm, calendar mm-hmm. like we are getting close. Um, and we're going to get together to get grounded in Christ. And y'all know we are living, just like Dana said a few moments ago, we are living through some turbulent times, Delta variant, persecution across the world. I mean, it is so much. The storms of life are raging around us. But guess what? We don't have to be shaking. Shaken. Yeah. We can get grounded in God's truth and we can stay grounded in God's truth. And so there are some limited spots available to join us in Indianapolis. I encourage you to go to reviveourhearts.com to find out more about Revive 21. And um, it's coming up this October. Meet us in Indianapolis, okay? And you can also check it out. Uh, the conference schedule, everything else at revive21.com. That is something I'm so excited about, Portia. You know, the other day I was listening to Shane and Shane. They're going to be our worship leaders at Revive 21. And I thought about that first moment when I am worshiping with thousands of other women. I haven't been in that big of a corporate worship setting since before the pandemic. I've been with my church with a few hundred people, but I got chills at the thought of worshiping together with you and my other sisters in Indianapolis as Shane and Shane lead us. I hope you'll join us. Listen, the the reader's comments have been blowing up. People are praying. Mm -hmm. It's like the Lord has our he already had you excited about praying for Afghanistan before Mm -hmm. we asked you to pray with us. You are saying that this just really was scratching an itch that you already had. And isn't that just like our grounded sisters, Portia, that they'd already be praying that we didn't have to call them to it. And we just Mm -hmm. got to do it together today. Also, um, several Mm -hmm. of our sisters, Cindy Anderson included, sent um, Trisha, a great big electronic hug because it was exactly what they needed to hear today. And I wish it could be a real hug, but it could be in a few weeks in Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. Join us there. Mm -hmm. We won't do electronic hugs or high fives. (laughs) We'll do it the real way. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you know, it's, I can't believe we're done with Grounded already. (laughs) That's That's a good episode, but we're not done praying, Portia. We're going to keep praying all day for our brothers and sisters, whoever the Lord puts on your heart. But get outside of yourself today and pray because somebody needs those prayers today. Yes, absolutely. And join us next week. Um, We're going to have Jill Savage with us, and she's going to be here to encourage you when your marriage is on life support. And so that's another storm that many people are dealing with. So often a lot of women don't want to talk about it or mention it. And so we're going to go there and she, I can tell you, she has so much to just share so much wisdom and encouragement. She found the perspective that she needed to weather a storm in her marriage. Where? What do we talk about today? God's word, okay? And so she's going to share that with us and we want you to be here, okay? Don't meet us here, beat us here, all right? Let's wake (laughs) up with hope together next week on Grounded.